Welcome back to another historic event here on It Resolves. Today's deck is Luris Shadow. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and happy Friday to you all. I hope you had a wonderful week. I know as far as the, the decks have been uh, going this week, we really haven't had a great one, but I'm hoping to change that today with what I think is a really fun historic deck. It is a shadow deck, if anybody doesn't know what that means. Uh, Death Shadow is kind of the main card here. Now, before we jump into this deck, I do need to mention... This is a one-for-one one list that can't be countered actually posted over on Aetherhub. There's also a video on it as well. I encourage you, please go check that out. I'll of course link the deck down below the Aetherhub link that does have the video attached. So please go show some support for Can't Be Countered. Really a phenomenal deck here and that's why we're playing it today. I think it's gonna be a really fun one. Uh, so as far as how shadow decks normally run, it's a bit of a suicide deck. So you're trying to get your life total down below 13. Uh, and when it's below 13, Death Shadow can then come down, and it, obviously this is a powerful card, it's 13-13 for one black mana, which on the face of it seems amazing. Gets a little worse with the ability, which says it gets minus X minus X, where X is your life total, so that's why you need to get it below that 13 mark, uh, and then therefore you can play this out, and then as your life total goes down, you actually get a stronger and stronger creature. The idea being that you can try and protect it with a lot of hand disruption, with Mind Spike, and Thought Seize, uh, both of which actually deal damage to you, which is fine because, again, you're trying to get your life total down. Uh, we do also have a little bit of removal with uh, Fatal Push and Play with Fire, and then actually a really interesting one, Penragon Besieged. Uh, this is an enchantment that, at the beginning of your end step, choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures your opponents control. It perpetually gets minus one, minus one, and when it when your opponent has no creatures, you actually sacrifice this. Kind of a nice include little tech piece here, long-term value. I like that a lot. Uh, Blossoming Defense is here to provide that hexproof to the Death Shadow. This is really going to help keep it onto the field, maybe even get a little power boost and win the game off of it. Very, very easy way to kind of take over. Uh, we do have Bitter Reunion. This is kind of a nice little tech piece for the deck as well. So not only does it come down, you discard a card if you would like, and then you draw two cards, but you can pay the one and sacrifice it to give all of your creatures haste, which is huge when you've got really massive creatures coming down. And it also helps to trigger the revolt on Fatal Push, which is a really nice little kind of tech synergy there that's awesome. Uh, Teamer Battle Rage is basically the game ender. The idea is to get this down. Tarmogoyf is really here to kind of help provide a little more board uh, presence. And it's obviously a very powerful card for this deck. Assassin's Trophy for a little bit of removal as well. And then Assemble the Team is another really key card. Search the top third of your deck. <laughs> That's a lot for any card and put that card into your hand and then shuffle your deck. This is really good when you really don't need a lot of mana to make the deck operate. This costs two mana. If you get a one mana Death Shadow on turn three, you can get a really solid hit off of this and get it onto the battlefield. I did forget to mention Soul Guide Lantern is here just to exile cards from the graveyard, of course. Agadine's Awakening gives us a couple extra lands that do deal damage to us if we would like. And then of course, they also this also allows us to bring a lot of things back from the graveyard as does our companion, Luris. This allows us to bring some stuff back as well and then you'll notice that in a lot of cases these lands are either shock lands which deal to if we choose to bring them in untapped or pain lands with sulfurous springs uh the land war waste and then of course mana confluence as a full four here all of which is perfectly fine we're trying to win the game quickly and we're trying to get our life total to a low point but a manageable point so we can take over the game uh so that's the deck. Again, can't be countered. Thank you. I really do appreciate you sharing this list. I wanted to take it for a spin. I love a good Jun Death Shadow deck. And so today, that's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to sit it through a, a uh, historic event. It's going to be a blast. I hope you'll stick around with me for the full event. Hopefully we can get some wins. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Not a hugely powerful start, albeit we do have a lot of removal. Uh, the teamer battle rages are, of course, not very good until you've got a creature on the battlefield, but the assemble the team really makes this a somewhat keepable hand. Uh, I'm actually going to try it. Not sure that this is the right call, I'll be honest, but we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. All right, very cool. Um, so, with this being a probably mono red-ish style deck, I think what I'm going to do is just let this enter tapped. We're not going to take the unnecessary damage yet. Uh, looks like is it. Okay, fair enough. 
one of the things we have to be considerate of is whatever the, the opponent is playing, we need to kind of account for that with our life total. And in a deck like this, we are absolutely expecting them to, you know, deal reasonable damage with their deck, which is not something we want to take too lightly. So uh, let's go ahead and assemble the team while we can, knowing that they probably will have some counters in their midst. Uh, I'd like to just try and get a Death Shadow here into our hand. It's going to really ease up on how this goes. Also, kind of incredible, the opponent doesn't get to see that card, which is pretty amazing, actually. Like, you got to think, that's a that's a third of your deck you get to look through and to just throw a card into your hand. Like, that's pretty powerful. Uh, now, we do need to get rid of some cards, obviously, on the battlefield here. Thankfully, again, we've got the means to do that, and it looks like the opponent is probably either digging for a land or just kind of sandbagging until after they draw the card. That's always kind of a nice little technique, of course. Uh, but we should be able to kind of start dealing a little bit more damage here. That's very good. Another Soul Scar Mage is definitely scary. Uh, but again, we have outs. So uh, this is where we do need to start being quite careful, though. But I think what we can do is go ahead and pay the two. Uh, let's throw you down. And let's throw you down. Uh, so we're going to take another one here. That does bring this up to three. Fully expect that this could die. Uh, but this does, of course, get the flyer off the battlefield, which is very, very helpful for us. Uh, now, again, this is at risk, of course. Uh, and so it might have been worth it to mind spike instead. But we'll see what happens. Looks like they did have a uh, solution there for the problem. That's fine. And let's see what we can do. They're going to hit us for four. That's definitely scary. Um, unfortunately don't have a whole lot we can do about it. Probably misplayed by playing the Death Shadow, honestly. Um, but that's fine. I do really like this. So let's go ahead and get the... That off the battlefield. Um, do we Mind Spike or do we just Assassin's Trophy? Um, I don't think we can take any more damage, right? So that's not really on the table. Uh, I think we just go ahead and uh, I suppose we should wait, right? Technically, we should wait. So let's do that. Let's wait until their turn, and then we'll see what happens. They do also have the Den of the Bugbear here, which if they just suit that up. We can just kill it, uh, which is certainly a helpful option. Uh, and unfortunately, I think this is going to just straight kill us, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and get one of these off. All right, uh, so this is gonna deal four damage. They have the prowess trigger here. Yeah, you know what? In hindsight, we kept a bad hand against it. We had no creatures in our opening hand and it was just a little too slow for us. So you know what? It's okay, we learned. Maybe don't keep no creature hands. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That's okay. Did I have fun in that match? I did. All right, guys, let's jump into game number two. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. Now, this is actually a much more reasonable hand from the perspective of, like, we've got some actually solid playables here, but uh, is it worth keeping? Um, I think we mulligan until we have something a little more exciting. Maybe this is worth keeping, though. Again, we don't want to go down too far on, the, on um, cards in hand here. And this actually has a reasonable chance of just drawing into something with the Bitter Reunion, so I feel like uh, we can keep this and probably just throw back a land, I think. Um, so what we're going to do is turn one Thoughtseize, uh, and we'll see what we get. Okay, this is a terrifying prospect. Uh, let's see. I think we just take the Transmogrify. Uh, the good news is we've got some time against this deck, it looks like, so there is some benefit there. Um, and there's the Death Shadow as well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's Mind Spike. Uh, let's take you. Let's Mind Spike again. <laughs> We're just going to start picking apart their hand, and this really opens us up to be able to uh, kind of do whatever we need to do. Um, let's take the Seize the Spoils. We don't really want them to discard a Sarah's Emissary, I feel like, or get a Transmogrify off. So I feel like those are kind of the important cards. Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, well, let's just do this, I guess. We'll just get everything out of their hand <laughs> and then Death Shadow. Uh, yeah. Basically, it's up to them to draw something at this point. Uh, hopefully they don't and we're good, but it looks like they 
Ah, uh, they're just doing that to draw a card. Okay, fair enough. I was like, why are you doing that? But yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right, let's Bitter Reunion first. Uh, the reason being, obviously, it does power up the uh, the Death Shadow, but it also gives us an extra card in hand, which is helpful. Uh, deal six, pretty reasonable. All right, have to hope they did not hit a Transmogrify, uh, or I guess Transmogrify, you do actually need a creature on the battlefield, I suppose, so it's not all that bad. Um, let's get you down. And yeah, let's, uh, let's not. I guess we should have given haste here. Uh, again, we are trying to win the game quite quickly, uh, but I think this works out okay. Let's now do this just to get this off the battlefield though. Awesome. Uh, I, I don't wanna have to pop this if we don't have to, if that makes sense. Uh, it wasn't gonna win us the game that turn, and so it felt more important. And there we go, we got the win. <laughs> All right, that was perfect. Uh, that was a bit closer than I thought it might get to. We should have given haste, I think. Uh, but overall, that was a really good game, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. So let's try and learn from that. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And again, I actually think this is a pretty reasonable keep. We've got some long-term value uh, between the Tarmogoyf and the uh, Besieged here. So we're going to give this one a shot. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, just really quick, before I forget, uh, you may have noticed we started posting some YouTube shorts uh, as well as some social media posts. They're the same thing, technically. But uh, basically what we have been doing is using AI to create really cool looking proxies. Um, now I want to stress very importantly, cause I know there are some potentially not happy feelings towards AI cards just because of, you know, a variety of reasons, but in particular, um, uh, what do we take here? I really don't like Skyclave Apparition. I think we just have to take that. Um, I know there might be some feelings towards AI generated artwork and I totally understand I'm a graphic designer by trade like I I get it uh, but for us this is just a really fun little idea that we get to share with you guys and so I really hope you enjoy it I really hope you have fun with it because that's all we're trying to do uh, and so far it has been a blast guys it has been so fun uh, to try these new cards out and to try and get some really cool artwork down I mean, it's working great. These cards look beautiful, and it's something to share with you guys. And so I really hope you do enjoy those. That's all that these are meant to be is fun, uh, and hopefully something that maybe down the line we can print for you guys. But right now, it's just meant to be like a really cool exploration thing. We even started doing some what if cards. I know some people got a little upset uh, by the what if cards solely because uh, it was technically a card that you know, not officially, but it has been spoiled kind of thing, uh, which I get, but like, we're just, again, guys, we're just here to have some fun with it. And so we knew that the card was spoiled. This was really just meant to be, you know, something fun. So that's all it is. Uh, but I really hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope you continue at least to enjoy it. Cause I do think it, it's a cool little thing. I don't know. I really like it. Um, it's something different, very different. Uh, obviously we're not going to attack here, but we do get to kill this little guy. Uh, which is pretty useful, um, and we do start to uh, remove some of these counters technically. I guess that it removes it technically, I'm not really sure. Uh, Collected Company is going to be pretty scary here. Uh, and they could also, I kind of want to, I want them to burn the Skyclave Apparition. Like, that's kind of the goal, is that they get rid of that. Uh, but so far, they've obviously not pushed for that. They also didn't go for the Coco this turn, which is kind of intriguing. I really would have thought they they should have, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to take it, obviously, because now we have enough that we can actually do a little more work with this. Um, let's, let's go here. Uh, we will discard... I think assemble the team as much as I don't want to. I think that's the move. Uh, let's play you. Um, they've got no real open mana, so let's attack in. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Fully expecting that they'll probably remove it. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Let's go to get minus one, minus one. Uh, now they do have that Skyclave Apparition. We're kind of baiting them into doing it a little bit here. 
but it looks like they're gonna go this route. That's fine. Ah, okay. Uh, well, they don't have a... Yeah, okay, that's... Does this, uh, let's see. No, okay, cool. Ooh, that was gonna be really scary. Okay. They do get a counter here, which is very scary. They get a lot of counters, I suppose, there. Uh, so we're gonna take six. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, that does make a giant 9-9 nine -nine right now, which is kind of useful. Um, how close do we want to get? Because <laughs> we could, we could, um... I think we're going to lose if we don't, so I'm just going to go for it, man. Screw it. Uh, we're going to do this. I don't know that this is a great idea. Oh, it definitely isn't a good idea, is it? Uh, no, that works out. Yeah, we can still team teamer battle rage, so we will. All right, let's uh, let's attack in. We're dead next turn, so like, there's really no way we don't do this. You know what I mean? Oh, they so screwed up. Oh man, they totally screwed up. Why would you do that? Why would you not? You know that? Uh, well, maybe they don't know, but teamer battle rage is a pretty constant card in Death Shadow, and there we go, guys. We got the win. I'm glad we pulled that Hail, Hail Mary play. That was perfect. All right, guys. Two and one. Doing all right so far. I like this deck. Let's move on to game four. Yeah, four. All right, guys. Here we are for game number four, and yeah, I mean, this is pretty easy keep. We got a Death Shadow. We've got a Blossoming Defense as well, both of which are really important cards. We even have a Mind Spike here to start to clear the way, uh, so we'll see what the opponent's actually up to very quickly, hopefully. Uh, and yeah, we might be able to get uh, a little bit of a, a jump start on this. So far, we're doing okay. Even if we lose this game, I'm feeling reasonably uh, strong about this. So I'm I'm loving the deck at the very least. I think that's all we can hope for. Uh, looks like wow, they are they are doing the most uh, interesting. So. Um, I think we take the late to dinner. Expecting that their reanimator and then dragon storm is kind of next on the chopping block if we can help it Sounds like fatal push is probably not going to be all that helpful uh, Given that they just will have more powerful things than that, but we'll we'll see uh, Let's pay two Let's go here. Uh, we do have the assassin's trophy Which is again just a really great card for this because it just allows us the opportunity to kind of blow whatever it is up uh, and that's really solid, so we'll we'll see what they're up to. Uh, looks like they're gonna go ahead and Faithless Looting. Obviously a really good option. They've got the Blade Wing. Uh, there is an infinite loop here that we do need to be mindful of, uh, so we'll, we'll kind of keep that in the back of our heads. Um, let's see. I think we pay two, uh, and I actually think we just have to pass here. Uh, because I do think we need the Assassin's Trophy up. Next turn we can do a little bit more, but right now I don't think we can manage that. Uh, we do have to be very, very careful of what the opponent might be up to here, so... Uh, cool. Um, we'll pay two. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just Tarmogoyf and pass. Uh, this gives us, you know, there's a Blossoming Defense available if they go for anything other than their combo. Uh, the Assassin's Trophy hopefully can break up the combo. Uh, I'm not overly optimistic about that, but that's certainly an option. Um, they are going to have plenty of mana here, so... Yes, so they're going to go ahead, draw and discard two, and then create that treasure token. Perfectly good. They're, they're doing what they need to do. Uh, what was the other card? The Scholar? Yeah, I thought Scholar is so sick. All right, cool. Well, let's see what we can do. Okay. Uh, let's see. think we just assassin's trophy right away um i'm not 100 percent sure on this i'm not sure of the uh let's see you can cast target our okay so they're gonna go ahead and dragon storm now we might have pulled the trigger a little too early um in which case i think we just lose which is fine right like not not overly stressed about that it is what it is 
Uh, they're gonna get three dragons on the battlefield. Yeah, we, we probably should have waited, right? Yep. That's a dead Tarmogoyf. <laughs> uh, sure. And there's the blade wing. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're just dead, <laughs> so, like, that's fine. Uh, this, this infinitely goes off, so I'm gonna go ahead and concede. That was a mistake on my end. I should not have Assassin's Trophy the Scholar. Should have hit the Terror of the Peaks, actually. Uh, and so that was just my mistake, but it's all good. Let's go ahead. Uh, that was game four, I think. Let's double check just to be safe. Uh, I think we're two and two right now. Yeah, we're two and two. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's jump into game five. All right, guys, and here we are for game number five. Uh, potentially the last game, but I do really like this hand, so we are gonna run with it. Uh, I'm gonna run the mana confluence out there so we can play with fire if we need to. Uh, depending on what the opponent has, that's always an important thing to be able to do. So, let's see. It looks like <laughs> life gain is the move. Uh, with that in mind, do we wanna kill this or do we wanna kill, like, a voice? I think we actually wanna wait. Um, I might be making incorrect decisions here also, and that's that's quite fine. Um, let's do this. Uh, and again, we're gonna leave up that play with fire. I'm not gonna over over concern ourselves too much here. We we want to hit something important, but we can do it in response. Uh, okay, we could do it in response to other things, right? So this is a little more helpful, I think. Um, okay. Kind of surprised they're actually attacking. I'm just gonna kill it. I think now we kill it and not worry too much about what they're... Huh. Nice. Alright, uh, we don't have a land. That's the only downside here. Um, in which case, we could certainly go for a land, however... I kind of like the idea of leaving this up. We could also just pop the lantern to try and get one. Let's do that. I think that's actually pretty reasonable. Um, maybe we should have waited just in case they have a turn three play and we could have fatal pushed it, but we can still fatal push the angel here. All right, we'll see. Uh, we do have the assassin's trophy still as well and a bitter reunion that can come down and you know remove itself from the battlefield, in which case we've got a little more we can do. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Assassin's Trophy can take care of that, which is helpful. Let's go ahead and kill this. Uh, we probably should have done that first, but that's fine. Okay. Really not expecting them to have very much for the mind spike, but it does mean if they don't have anything, we could draw a card. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this. Um, okay, they didn't have anything. That's fine. Let's. I'm gonna go ahead and fatal push here. Um, I actually, we'll pay the two here. This gets us in Death Shadow range, uh, which I think is what we need to do. We need to get a creature on the field, right? So that seems important. That's so good. Uh, that's also quite good. All right, double Assassin's Trophy. All right, six. So let's definitely kill this first. Uh, the reason being, obviously, we're, we're getting rid of the thing that's gonna gain them life over the long term. So I'd rather get that off the field now uh, and then be able to get Death Shadow down, which is just obviously a really good card, and there we go. Um, let's hope for the best. I have no clue. I, I mean, we could just die next turn for all I know. They do have infinite combos and obviously any life gain deck. There's Heliods, there's all kinds of fun stuff. Righteous Valkyrie is a good one. Uh, they do get the attack in, that's fine. I'm just gonna Assassin's Trophy. <laughs> Uh, dealing a little extra damage to ourselves, but hopefully putting us in a much better position. Um, this allows us to basically freely attack in, because uh, we do need to start... Oh, they do have black. Hmm. All right, sick. Uh, let's do this. Uh, and at this point, we are not looking to take any more damage. We are at eight, which is terrifying. Uh, and we do also have just the Blossoming Defense to save the Death Shadow in case they do have, like, a Fatal Push or something. I assume that's why they're running black. 
Um, but, you know, we never know. We'll, we'll see what they're up to. I'm curious if they attack. Uh, because if they just don't have a creature in hand, they might not attack, but I think they would. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Sounds good. Um, we did give them something to think about at the very least, though, that they can't just... Just retarget enchantment. Okay. That's fine. I don't love it, but it's fine. Um, and unfortunately, we are going to get to a point where we're just kind of out of range of what they can... Or what we can do. Uh, because they've got so much damage on the field, right? Like, it's terrifying. Another Death Shadow. It is quite good. Um, all right, we're gonna go here. We go here. Throw out another Death Shadow. Uh, and unfortunately, we just lose next turn, I think. Um, I guess we could have attacked with both, but again, I think they would have been able to block if they want, but they really don't have to, and now they've got so much damage in the air that there's really not much we can do. This does not give trample, so it really wouldn't have mattered. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and thought seize them just for the fun of it. Um, yeah. All right. Good game, opponent. Unfortunately, that's going to be the end of it, guys. Uh, they've got flyers. We can't deal with flyers. That's just one area where this deck really has to have the Assassin's Trophies ready to go. Uh, and we had used them. Uh, I think we did so correctly, but at the same time, obviously, they had some really powerful stuff. Let's go ahead and claim our prize, guys, and let's see what we get. Uh, got a core 2021 pack. Let's go ahead and open it just to finish this up again guys Can't be countered put this deck together and I still really love it despite a two and three record I don't think that's the best record we could have had. I think we could have done a little bit better Regardless though the deck itself is solid uh, death shadow has always been a really fun deck It's been really good in modern now. It's per it's I think quite good in historic albeit I don't know that it's tier one or anything, uh, but it is really really fun. I encourage you guys to try it It's a different way to play if you've never played a death shadow deck It really kind of switches up your mindset of using your life as more of a resource uh, in a negative way, as in you're trying to get it a little bit lower. Uh, so it really does force you in a, into a different mindset. It's something fun to try. Please do check that out. But guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you watching. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. Hopefully a good weekend as well. I'll see you guys then.